Now this accelerator driven systems or it is called accelerator driven subcritical reactor systems. They are of great importance to whole world in general and to India in particular. This system was discussed briefly in lecture number 9. Here I will give more details. Now if you take uh, the use of, right now there are three main sources of energy. One is coal, other is oil and third one is gas. These are the uh, three resources, reserves known at this moment. And it is estimated that the uh, Coal will last only about 250 years, oil about 50 years and gas about 65 to 70 years in this range. That means we have to find a new source of energy because when these uh, all three sources uh, they, uh, fin they are finished then there will be problems. So use of solar and wind is picking up right now and uh, of course nuclear power uh, appears to be inevitable options as future energy source because uh, that will be a safe as well as cheaper than the other ones. Of course now solar energy's cost is coming down. However in this case uh, disposal of nuclear waste in any reactor, these radioactive uh, nuclei are formed and they are called nuclear, nuclear waste. One is plutonium, neptunium, americium and curium and they are, that is an important issue in harnessing the energy from the critical reactor. They are more formed in the critical reactor. So if we can find a system where these nuclear waste nuclei are not formed or they are made use of in some way or the other, then the system will be acceptable to everybody. Now in a conventional system, how it works? conventional reactor system. Normally we use uranium-235 and a thermal neutron interacts with it and if that breaks into two nuclei plus few nuclei because of fission process. And in this process an energy of about 180 MBV to about 0.2 GeV is released and that is what is used for generation of electricity. Now the problem comes here that uranium has several isotopes and only one of them, for example uranium-235 has only 0.7% and which is fissile. So uh, uranium-235 percent is only 0.7 percent which uh, and this uranium 35 is fissile. So that means this fission can take place only with the uh, uranium 235 while if you take that uranium 238 which is 99.3 percent roughly which is a fertile material and is not a fissile material so it cannot be used for energy production in conventional reactors. So this basically becomes a waste actually, it has to be taken care of. Not only that, not only these ones but even several minor actinides are produced as I mentioned in the earlier in this case and that minor actinides are produced with heavier isotopes of uranium like 238 when neutrons are absorbed. Not only minor actinides but also fission products are produced. So they are, some of them are listed here and their lifestyle, life, half-lives are also mentioned and you can see that it will take lot of time for them to 
reduced to other two safe elements or other two safe isotopes. In the case of this reaction in fission, several fission products also are formed and they are also radioactive and they are, uh, they are they have to be taken care of. For example, some of them are mentioned here strontium, cesium, iodine. So, uh, in conventional nuclear reactor, taking care of nuclear waste, which is consist of which consist of back minor actinides and fission products, is a problem, and that is why not many uh, people are happy about it. So, to solve this problem, in November 1993. Professor Carlo Rubia, then Director General of CERN, Geneva, proposed a system which he called Thermal Neutron Energy Amplifier System based on thorium cycle. So far we were using uranium cycle. Now he is proposing thorium cycle and why it is very important to us that you will see in the next few slides. So he proposed that you can use thorium cycle for the energy production and uh, that is called ADS. Why it is very important to India? This can be seen here that although we have not much of uranium, but we have highest amount of thorium available in India and this is you can see here that India is having highest amount of thorium. And this is the latest report. This is in thousands of tons. So you can see almost like 1 million tons of that. And uh, these are the references for them. So roughly almost like 16 to 8, 17 percent of world's thorium is in India. And that's a very good quality. So if we can use thorium in our reactors, then it is estimated that our fuel problem will be solved almost for 500 to 600 years. So this is a very good and I think India should really work on it. And then the system which uh, I proposed by Professor Carlo Rubia is called Accelerator Driven Subcritical Reactor System. Why it is important to have subcritical reactor? Because uh, in conventional reactors, producing power due to criticality, safety issues are involved. While if it is subcritical, then that problem will not come and it will be inherently safe. So what he proposed was that you have a subcritical reactor and the extra neutrons which are required, they will be coming from outside and they are generated by the accelerator system. So it's a new, new kind of fission reactor where nuclear power, let's say just for example, 500 to 1000 megawatt electrical can be generated in a neutron multiplying core and K effective here is less than one. So that means it is subcritical. So this if K effective, K effective is less than 1, it is subcritical. If it is equal to 1, it is critical. It is critical. Here it is subcritical. And if it is more than 1, then it is supercritical. Now, this will be inherently safe if K effective is less than 1. K effective is shown here. That means the production of neutrons is less than the absorption plus leakage. So that means it will never become critical. Now, if it doesn't become critical, then power generation will not take place. So how to make it critical? That means you have to provide extra neutrons from outside and that makes it critical. But now the control will become on the system which you are using from outside. 
and that is what is ADS. So the extra neutrons come from the accelerator part. So accelerator has to be driven by an external neutron source. This is very important and that is what is done by the accelerator. So neutron source requirement for ADS is given here. So let us take one GeV, a proton beam, interact with the heavy nuclei, produces about 25 to 30 neutrons. Now it's, it's, a, it's not a fission reaction, it's a spallation reaction. So each proton will generate about 25 to 30. And why it has to be about 1 GeV, you will see next, in the next slide. So suppose for the sake of calculations, you take 10 milliampere beam current or 10 milliampere 1 GeV becomes 10 megawatt. So that is a beam power. So this reaction can yield about 10 power 18 neutrons per second because each proton is creating 25 to 30 neutrons. And this neutrons per second you will see here can generate the nuclear power of 500 to 1000 megawatt. So if you take fission energy liberated in a neutron multiplying core, K, now it's a subcritical core, then it is given by this, this formula. 180 MBV is the uh, energy uh, released in each fission reaction. So if you take K effective, less than 1 and but of the order of 0.95 to 0.98 then the thermal fission power in the range of this would require driving neutron source of that and this is already there you have seen it it can be generated there so that means with this 1 GeV proton beam of 10 milliampere you can generate a nuclear power of about 1000 megawatt from where the 30, uh, 25 to 30 neutrons per proton comes, uh, it comes from here based on the calculations as well the experiment. So you can see this figure where the number of neutrons generated per proton in a normalized manner as a function of proton energy. You can see that around 1 GeV, this is 1 GeV, is, uh, is about it saturates and it is around 25 to 30 in that range. With other, this is on the lead target, but if you have other target, it can be slightly more or less. So uh, you can see the on the average in a spallation process, when the one, uh, one GeV proton beam interacts with a heavy target like lead or bismuth, then it will create, it will generate about 25 to 30 neutrons. Of course, having a full spectrum, so you have to moderate it. And if you have that, and these calculations were done at Fermilab, and uh, I have taken from this figure from invited talk given by Chanshekar Mishra in the impact 2005. Now in BRC also initiated this program, as I said that for India it is absolutely of great importance to have an IDS program. And there, this is the accelerator, up to, uh, you can see here, up, it will go about 1 GeV, 1 GeV, 30 milliampere. In that proton beam will fall on a spallation target. For, for the uh, region to take away the heat, it will be a liquid target. So this is a spallation target here, spallation target. And neutrons are produced and it is surrounded by a core of thorium and where the uh, energy will be generated. So you can see that detailed studies have been done on high current accelerator, spallation target and reactor system and uh, this program has started here. So this uh, accelerator will be developed at BRC in three phases. First one will be 20 MBV, 
low energy high intensity proton accelerator second will be up to 200 mb and at 20 200 mbv itself you can uh, you can uh, uh, have a demo ads for uh, physics studies however the power can be generated with the 1 gv accelerator so you can see that here this even the smallest uh, 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 this 20 MBV uh, LIPA consists of several components and I am happy to tell you that this has been is almost about to be commissioned. However, uh, this is uh, this development of 1 GV 30 milliampere current accelerator is difficult because higher currents there will be lot of processes formed like uh, is very difficult to contain that beam because of the space charge effect, repulsive accelerator, accel uh, uh, repulsive space charge effects, and also the because of beam halo problems. But those problems can be solved, and uh, we are going ahead with that. Now you can see here that uh, why 30. I am talking about 30 milliampere so far. And how that 30 milliampere comes, whether can we reduce that because getting accelerators of that energy and the current are difficult. As of now, there is no high current accelerator operating in CW mode. So you can see if you calculate that uh, uh, power, thermal power generated using this current, you can see that for 1000 megawatt, you need about 30 milliampere if you have k effective of 0.95 however if you have 0.98 then it reduces to about 10 milliampere current similarly if you want to generate a power of 3000 megawatts thermal then you need about 90 milliampere current with k effective of 0.95 but if you go to 98.98, then it reduces to about 30 milliampere current. So if you want to have this kind of power generation, which will be almost like about 1000 megawatt electrical, then you need at least 30 milliampere currents. So this comes from this formula for the uh, power, thermal power, and the parameters which have been uh, taken into account is that proton energy is 1 GV and uh, number of uh, newtons per proton is 25 and fission in fission we are taken that there will be each fission there will be 2.5 newtons produced uh, and we know that it is uh, in the range of 2, point, uh, 2 to 3 newtons are produced per fission to give you some numbers for reactors that is converting into electrical power with 40 percent efficiency to 280 megawatt then how it will be useful uh, using thorium you can take that this consists of three uh, sub components which uh, carlo ruvia gave actually this is what he gave you have an accelerator let's say it is about 1 gv 30 milliampere then it will be 30 milliampere 1 G will be 30 megawatt and the accelerator efficiency is uh, uh, is about uh, about 50 percent you can call it so that means whatever power you are giving as an input uh, beam energy will be power will be about 50 percent of that so you have an accelerator where uh, you are feeding about 60 megawatt power so you get 30 megawatt here and this is what you want the corresponding so when this beam falls on a target heavy target and that gives you about 25 times gain roughly that's because you are getting the so if you have 30 megawatt and roughly 20 gain you will get 600 megawatt of that goes into the reactor and which has a conversion factor of about 40 percent from uh, uh, from uh, thermal to electrical so you you get about 240 megawatt of electrical power out of that 60 will go to the accelerator and this system and 180 megawatt can be can go to grid 
So you will see that initially you have to feed power from outside. Later on it becomes like a self-sufficient independent system where power is generated and you, you can, uh, uh, whole system can be given power from this and uh, extra power. For example, in this case about 180 megawatt power is available to the grid. So after, after some time it becomes a self-sustainable system. Now also giving that, uh, uh, what is the physics behind it? And if it is a subcritical system, you can see that the multiplying, multiplication in the subcritical reactor is given by this and the gain is given by this. This is for the subcritical system. And if you take uh, a typical value of uh, G naught, which is about in the range of uh, 2.1 to 2.4, then you can see that K effective 4.9 the gain will be 20 and for k effective 0.97 it will be 70 and so on and then the k effective 0.997 which is close to the critical one and which we should avoid and then it will be 700 so that means even little bit of fluctuation in parameters can make it unsafe so we should not use k effective of the order of 0.997 However, in this case which we are considering, we are considering 1 GeV proton energy on the lead target producing about 20 neutrons. You have seen it, uh, 20 to 30 in that range. Uh, so typically, let's say 40% of these neutrons will create fission reaction will have fusion reaction that means out of these eight neutrons will generate fission and each fission roughly gives about 0.2 GeV energy 180 MeV so roughly I am taking it about 0.2 then it will give it will generate uh, 1.8 GeV so that means we started with a 1 GeV proton and uh, it is giving an energy of about 1.6 GeV so uh, the, we have to keep these parameters in mind. So with the, uh, this order of magnitude calculation, so with k effective of 0.98, the multiplication will becomes about 50 with all the parameters put in and it produces about 80 GeV energy. So 1.6 into 50 becomes 80 GeV. So the energy multiplication effectively in a subcritical reactor system based on the 1 GV accelerator becomes about 80. Now the beam power was 30 megawatt here and it's multiplied by 80. So you can see that ADS power which is giving is about 2400 megawatt. So this is order of magnitude. This will exact calculations will involve a lot of other parameters. The biggest advantage of this is uh, uh, is reduction in the minor actinides. And uh, see, for example, for us, it is very important to use thorium because it's a high abundance, and it is uh, it is available in India in plenty. So therefore, uh, uh, and particularly, it is. Uh, uh, three to four times abundant than the uranium. Right now, uh, all our reactors are using uranium and it is three to four times available. So that means we have a lot of better fuel performance characteristics which are listed here. You can see higher melting point, better thermal conductivity. This is very important parameter. And lower fission gas release. Uh, but most important is this parameter, which is, which is comparison of minor actinides produced in this thorium uranium cycle is uh, that is much less as compared to this uh, this cycle, which is used in many reactors, and that is shown here in this slide that the minor actinides production in the thorium-based cycle is you can relative values you can see here. For example, in this one, you can see that neptunium-237, 
which was produced in uranium fuels the uranium plutonium cycle 4.6 here it is only uh, 0.06 is much less similarly americium which was 4 here is uh, minus 7 so it is almost like 0 and so therefore and these were the minor actinides which were responsible for that neptunium americium camellium so these are the and these are not even produced so these are uh, some of the very big advantage that means your problem of waste management is automatically solved so uh, safety is taken care of that means the ads systems are inherently safe because the reactor is subcritical minor actinides are not produced and India it is abundantly available, so we this this has tremendous advantage for all. So thank you very much for this. Uh, so this uh, is the end of this course, and I wish you good luck.